In this video, we're going to look at assessment of the pectoralis minor and also the pectoralis major. First of all, we're going to look at position. You might notice from the model that the anterior part of the humerus looks slightly more forward than the left side here. And if I went underneath the acromion, the distance from the acromion to the couch on the right seems to be more superior than the left side. So maybe the right side, pectoralis minor, might be tight. But also, the coracoid process attachment is the coracobrachialis and also the biceps shorthead. And if my patient was to, if you bend both elbows, please, and just put your arms across your waist, <clears throat> the idea of that test is, if it now, the right shoulder drops back slightly by bending the elbow, it means we take out the bicep shorthead. And if I was to slowly bring the shoulder forward, and then now it drop back, it would be the coracobrachialis. But if the shoulder is forward in the position of shoulder flexion and elbow flexion, then we are left with the pectoralis minor. On this side, I would do the same again. I could bend the elbow to see if the shoulder drops back. And if it doesn't, bring the shoulder forward. And again, if it drops back, it's coraco. And if it stays forward, it would be pectoralis minor. And we'll come on to length in it in a second. Next, we're going to look at is the pectoralis major. Slowly bring both arms over your head, please. So this is called the arm elevation test. And we're going to slowly lower the arms down. And you will see that there is an obvious gap between the upper arm and the couch. And it is tighter on the right side, even though they're both tight because we have a gap on each. So this is particularly tight, this right side. Yeah, and then this is slightly tight on the left side here. We will do lats later, but if you did have a deviation out, then that would indicate a tight latissimus. Just for the demonstration, I'm just going to treat the right side. And before I do that, we can also palpate the sternal fibers of a pectoral and slowly lower it down. And then if you feel a bind, then that could give you an indication that the pec major is actually short and tight. To lengthen it, what I'm going to get my patient to do is, can you come over to your left, please? So you just come across. So you just need the arm to clear. So from this position here, then you can, if you want to, ask the patient to feel the bind about there. Hold your arm in that position, please. Hold it. So the patient holds their arm. Hold. You hold. So they hold for 10 seconds. This could be almost like a self-MET. So you could give your patient this exercise to do. After 10 seconds, breathe in. And as they relax, we can lower the arm down. And then we can lengthen the pectoralis major that way. In reality, when I'm treating my patients, I will tend to stand. And then what I tend to do is my hand cradles her elbow, her hand cradles my elbow. I use my leg and I just slowly take the patient until I feel a bind. So I will take the leg out, and for a man working on a woman, for obvious reasons, we place a hand on the upper part of the sternal pectoral. So from here, I ask my patient to slowly push their arm towards the ceiling. So my patient is like doing like a bench press. After the 10 seconds, relax please. I control the movement, and on the out breath, I take them into further abduction, and then slowly horizontally extend lengthening the sternal fibers of the pec. We hold for a few seconds. We get the patient to slowly push again, please. On the, let's take a breath in. And on the out breath, they push towards the ceiling. After 10 seconds contraction, we relax, take a breath. And on the out breath, we slowly horizontally extend. If this is the third and final time, we hold for 25 seconds. I will do a little bit less time for the demonstration, but 25 seconds for the body to remember the new position. Pectoralis minor, if you could lie on your side towards me, please. And then what we're gonna use now is a pillow. And rest your head. From this position, what we're gonna do is, if I place my patient's hand onto the waist here, my hand goes onto the anterior part of the shoulder. My other hand comes onto the mid scapular area. First of all, I'm going to slowly, if I'm not going to change my patient's neck here, just lift up your head, please. 
because she's just slightly extended. So rest your head there. So try if you can, get the neck into a more neutral position. Arm through the space, mid thoracic, hand onto the anterior shoulder. Slowly retract until there's a bind. Breathe in please. On the out breath, push your shoulder into my hand. My patient again pushes 10% or 10 to 20% for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, relax please. Breathe in and as the out breath, we slowly go into a retraction. And we do that two or three times. One movement I like to do, if you watch this final technique, breathe in please. If they push forward into my hand, so they activate in the pec minor. What I like to do is, once they've contracted, I'm going to say to my patient, using the arm, reach back, but rather than reach in, imagine you have a 10 pence piece between a shoulder blade or a coin, and you're going to squeeze the coin. The idea of squeezing the coin is that she activates the rhomboids, which then tells the pec minor to switch off through reciprocal inhibition. And once she's in that position, I can passively encourage lengthening of the pec minor. Many patients prefer that technique. So that would be for pec minor and pectoralis major.